A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings and signs and wonders, by war with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you before you and right before your loved ones in Egypt. This is why you must now know and fix your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and the earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In a few moments, we will stand and recite the Creed, a series of beliefs that go back to the early days of the Church, the Council of Nicaea, Council of Constantinople, formulating what we believe. And that's nice, okay, it's good, it's information. But the, the, 
the spirit of this holiday, the feast of the most blessed Trinity, is more than formulations and creeds. It's sharing in the very life of God. And the issue is, our God is real. Our God is real in history, in eternity, and presently. Our God is not a made-up God. Sometimes you hear people saying, oh, the, 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 the universe has guided me to do such and such a thing. Or I'm so glad that the universe ordered these things to happen in my life. Please, that's searching. Searching for what you and I already have. A real God, not one of many, God. Even to say the word is one. And the, and the Jews have it correctly. When they're writing the word that signifies God, if they were doing it in English, not Hebrew, you would see G space D. They don't even say the word God. It is too sacred. And the readings today remind us where that belief comes from. Moses is talking to the people of Israel, and this is written back into history, wasn't on the spot, but the followers of Moses and the traditions of the scriptures put these thoughts down that Mo Moses gave his people. And he's saying, now, now figure it out, folks. Um, all these other nations around here have gods and goddesses. And then he gives us a challenge, and it's a rather beautiful challenge. And he basically says, figure it out. This God that you worship is not a creation of the universe. It's not one of the gods. Our God is real. And he locates that God in history through the actions of God. And he says, nobody ever heard of a God speaking from the fire and live as God spoke to Moses in the burning bush and God spoke to Moses on, on Sinai giving him the Ten Commandments. Which of your gods has led you out of slavery from Egypt? Which of your gods, and he's asking the neighbors, created the heavens and the earth? There is no other. And it's very interesting, it's very basic. Keep the statutes and commandments I give you, that your people and your children will all know God through the word, through his Ten Commandments. And eventually, you and I will give giving a gift of knowing God in the word, his son Jesus, coming to earth. So the Feast of the Blessed Trinity is a celebration of our foundation of who we are as Christians. God is one. And in history, revealed his self, it's hard even to put a gender to it, by leading the people out of Israel, by creating. Look around. Look around the skies and the seas. Not an accident. Not something that the universe created. But a relational, loving God. A, a relational, loving God that Paul says... You know, because of Jesus, you and I have become God's children. And, and, you know, go one step further. You are so intimately involved with God through Jesus, and he's talking to the baptized Christians, that you can call God as Jesus did. Daddy, Abba. Talk about the intimacy that is being revealed through the theology of St. Paul that we can call God our daddy in heaven, the creator of all, our daddy. And God is the creator, 
The Holy Spirit is his kiss of love to the universe. And we have Jesus to follow, to understand God more and more. And the more we follow Jesus, the more we love and forgive and, and act with charity in our hearts, the more we're living up to our role as his siblings, the siblings of Jesus. Some of you have sisters and brothers. I had a brother, and I know what that means. Yesterday I was celebrating the graduation of one of my nephews, and at the head table, he and his sister, my niece, were sitting together chatting away in between the party, and Karen, my niece through marriage, says to me, I want my kids to grow up like that. Look at the way they're fooling around and talking to each other and sharing, sharing secrets and intimacies. And her two boys are on the road. So we know what a sibling is, someone you can just hang out with and, and well, if, if you're the same gender, share clothes with or, or share, as I did with my, my brother, sharing shaving equipment. i never forget, he used to like to use Noxema, but he was three years older than me. And he didn't like to share too much of his stuff, but a lot of the stuff he shared. The one thing I could not touch was his Noxema. Gave him a nice, clean shave. Well, I would take his Noxema. And one day I was angry at him. And to let him know that I used his Noxema, I got my finger and I stuck it right into the Noxema jar. And you open it up and you see this, this indentation. He was furious. You know, if you want to get furious at Jesus, you can get furious at Jesus. When you think he's not with you, talk to him. Call him out. You came so, so I can be your sister or brother, Jesus. And sometimes you don't act like my sister, my brother. And sometimes you, you don't reveal your father to me as my daddy. And we all had fathers. But this father, the creator, is everyone's father. To say that is the Holy Spirit within us. When we are moved spontaneously to do good, to love, to imitate Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit within us. And there are analogies we use, don't we? Your mother and father taught you how to love. They were the first people we looked at. Our father taught us how to be relating to men. Our mother taught us how to be relating to women. It's a great metaphor on the human level, but the truth is that God is love. And taking time out, and we can't even use the word time in reference to God, taking the time out of eternity to create the universe so that he could just love, it's marvelous. And we're the recipients of that fatherly love. And if we ever lose the enthusiasm of loving God, the Holy Spirit's there with us, who provokes us, who encourages us, who pushes us to follow the example of Jesus in loving. We're in an age right now, and it will come, it will go, we've had them before, in which there's a lot of controversy in our society. And it's really sometimes inane. I mean, why be upset over a person who speaks a different language or has a different color skin or a different culture? We are the creatures that God made, all of us. And when we look to one another, we need to look through the eyes of Jesus, our brother, at one another. We need to look at each other as Jesus looks at me and you. We need to speak to the Father, Jesus' Father, the way Jesus spoke to him, as our Father. And when we look in our society as we walk along the streets, we, we, we have to acknowledge that by our attitude toward one another, our civility, our Christian guidance toward one another. Recently in our city, cardinal and head rabbi, local synagogue, 
met in the synagogue, that put a face on anti-discrimination. That put a face aiming at removing anti-Semitism in our world. Realize how many people are Christian and they still are anti-Semite? And that the list goes on. Christians who are anti-Middle Eastern or Christians who are anti-Palestinian or Christians who are anti-Black or Latina or doesn't matter. And it's such an ironic slap in the face for God. It's almost like we're coming forward making fools of ourselves. Saying that I am better than you for any reason. Status, money, background. And God made a very clear point. And Moses reiterates it. And Paul reiterates it tonight. And Jesus summarizes it. Yeah, he sent the disciples, but he sends us. Go out into the whole world. And I am with you always until the end of time. And go out and baptize. Bring life in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Bring life to each other. That mandate didn't end when Jesus ascended. That mandate began and still goes on while Jesus is with us here on earth and we have the power to do what he asked us to do, given to us by the Holy Spirit at our baptisms. It's amazing. We have such, we have such strength. We have such promise. And we have a real God. Not a universe. Not a fantasy. God. The only one. And he's yours. And he's mine. And we have to share him.